Hey everyone, my name is Justin Odisho, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to create this arcade style gunshot screen effect in Adobe Premiere Pro. So I've got a couple things in my project media bin. I've got a video clip, just a sample clip. I've got some PNG kind of gun crack effects that I just found by Googling gunshot free PNG. Now you could probably find video versions of these on YouTube or find different free or premium stock resources like this but this is what i found and i also found a free sound effect of a gunshot so i'm going to drag my video clip on for example what i'm going to do is begin by applying this image on here and then using effects and keyframe animations i'm going to give it some more life and make it feel realistic and maybe even turn it into like a wasted screen that you see in a video game like grand theft auto so at whatever point i like i'm going to drag this png onto the image and I'm going to head over to the effect controls of that PNG and here I can change the position, the scale and the rotation of this image. So I can maybe do one or two. This is three and one. If you wanted, you can go into Photoshop, kind of cut one out at a time if you really wanted, but I'll just leave it like this. We'll start with one over here. Then I'll just hold option and drag that PNG so I can make a duplication of it. Maybe a couple seconds later, we'll make another set over here. Maybe flip the rotation around. And lastly, I'll do it one more time. Now, when I press play, you'll just see those three images pop on the screen, but with no real attention to detail to them. It just looks like a PNG popped on the screen. And to make it come a little bit more alive, I'm going to add some sound effects. So this sound effect that I found. Now, if you wanna create more audio tracks, unlike video tracks, it doesn't just create a new one when you drag lower. You'll actually have to right click and just add a track and you can stack if you need extra tracks like that. So from here, I can play it and now I got three synced up shots. Now, the next thing I wanna to do to add to this effect is as soon as the first PNG comes on the screen, I'm going to add a cut on the video clip and I'm going to adjust the speed of it. Now this clip was shot in a little bit of a higher frame rate, I think 60 frames per second. So I can afford to speed it down a little bit, give it slow motion without getting choppy. So I'll lower it down to 40%. And as soon as that first pop comes on the screen, things will get slower. Cool, kind of like the Grand Theft Auto wasted screens. So I'm gonna head over to the effects panel and I'll search for one called Tint. There's a lot of different ones you can use, but this will be fun. I'll grab Tint on here. And this is kind of like gradient maps in Photoshop. It lets you map the black and white or the shadows and the highlights to two different colors. In this case, I'll do a red tint. I'll just do kind of like a completely red tint. And I'm going to add some keyframes. So we're going to hit this stopwatch icon on the amount to tint. And we're actually going to begin at 100 here for the first one and then lower it down. But then as soon as the second one comes back up, we can increase it a bit. And then when the third one comes up, I will again increase it. Cool. So we get some effects syncing up with the sound effect now, giving a little bit more flavor. Now, one thing I'm going to do to just blend in the PNG a little bit is I'm going to set the PNG to a blend mode of let's say screen, or you know you can even set it to maybe 90% opacity. You can try different ones, like this is what overlay would look like, or hard light. I think I like hard light for this example. Now, if we like, we can have these kind of fade out like they would in, in an arcade game or something, just by right clicking and applying a default cross dissolve transition to the end of them. That could be one way to deal with it. You could also just leave them on for the duration of however long the rest of your clip would be as if you had a cracked screen or something. And on that audio layer, you can head over to your audio clip effects, your audio track mixer, and you can add things like a pitch shifter by dropping down the menu here, or you could slow down your audio track as well on the speed and duration, or even head over to your audio effects, maybe add some pitch or low pass filters, whatever, just make it sound like more underwater fuzzy feeling. To keep building onto this, I'm going to add a directional blur effect too, kind of like a screen shake. 
it's going to happen upon each crack. So I'm going to add a directional blur onto my video clip and I'm going to play around with some keyframes here to add some earthquakey vibration. So I'm going to add a keyframe on direction and uh, just to make it easy, I'm going to make the direction go through a couple cycles throughout the duration of the clip. But where we're really going to get some shake is in the blur length. So I'm going to toggle the keyframe, make it begin with some blur. And then right when that red kind of fades out, I'm going to bring it back down to zero. Wait till the next one pops on the screen. Add a keyframe again at zero. And then as soon as it pops on, make it blur a bit. Now I'm going to gradually make things blur and fade to black and white. So kind of with the same idea, I'll actually just copy and paste this tint effect, but I'll just remove all the keyframes and change the colors to black and white again. And we'll start at zero amount tint. And then at the end of the clip, we'll slowly start fading to black and white. So this will be a way where I can fade to black and white by the time that red blurs out. Then I'm also going to add just a straight up Gaussian blur. And the same time as the black and white tint happens, I'll add keyframes for zero to a decent amount on the blur. And I'll click repeat edge pixels so we don't get that shadowy vignette. And I can even add some text on there. Like I know we're mixing video games now some time crisis first person mixed with some Grand Theft Auto, but we can do like a wasted text screen. If I highlight that and press command D, I can actually add default cross dissolves on the start and end, a little shortcut there. And you can basically get creative with it as you want, but you have the basic idea now on how you can take a simple graphic image, overlay it on top of your video, and then build on top of it with effects, sound effects, and different things to bring it a little bit more to life. So if you enjoyed this video, leave a like on it. Let me know what you thought in the comments below and subscribe to my channel to check out all of my other and future videos. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.